Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And today I'm doing a follow-up on five loves and hates, but not really hates, but m more so um, kind of petty annoyances <laughs> of the uh, Metal G-Shock. I bought this, when was it? The, the beginning of June. Uh, it's now mid-August, so I've had it over two months. And yet again, my perceptions and feelings of this watch has changed. Now I'll do a quick wristwatch check before we get into it. If this thing will, ever work, will focus, I'm wearing the Thunderbolt. Yep, named in honor of the exact same reference worn, uh, not by Sean Connery, but it was featured in the movie Thunderbolt, 1965. So <sighs> there's there's quite a bit to talk about here. Now, first of all, I should just make it clear: if you want a full review of this, have a look back at the initial review. I go into all the specs. I'm not going to talk about that today. Now you will see with all the close-ups, it's very, very dirty. I've, I've battered this about, I've worn it. This really is just discussing my experience with this watch, uh, rather than an overview of the, 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 the technical breakdown of the minutiae of every single detail. So let's start with the five loves of this watch. Now, the first thing I have to say is the quality. I was really impressed. Something I didn't mention in the original reviews, if you see on the back there, it says made in Japan and you feel that quality. There's a definite step up in um, the, the, the level of finishing, the components, the materials, everything is just really, really spot on. I also love the fact that it's a screw in case back. Um, so no expenses have been spared. It feels more like a proper watch. And not that the G-Shock isn't a proper watch. What I mean by that is it feels more like a, a traditional watch. The heft of it, the weight of it, uh, the screws, um, the polishing. It's, you know, it's remarkably beautifully made. Even the strap was great. Supple, soft. The, you know, normally I, I, they're, they're kind of plasticky and cheap. Look, look at the detail on the buckle. Something that is undoubtable is the, uh, the negative display. It's one of the best negative displays I've ever experienced. If you remember the original Mudman I had, it was barely legible. They have definitely stepped up the quality in their negative displays. Um, so, yeah, and, and it's also much more readable at different angles um, than before. And this goes back to, you know, no expense being spared. The second thing I really love about this watch is the functionality. Now in the review, I went, I went through all the different, uh, the features, um, you know, stopwatch, day, date, calendar, all, all of it. It's one of those watches that I, after wearing it for a little while, I started questioning, well, what's the point of actually owning anything else? That's when you know you've got a really solid watch. I love the fact that uh, when it was on low power mode, it put itself to sleep to save power. Um, it's in a way, it's like the real smartwatch. And I don't mean that in the disposable um, you know, high-tech uh, computer on your wrist type thing. I mean, it's smart in the fact that, you know, it powered down, it has Bluetooth connectivity, it updates itself several times a day, the accuracy, I mean, without connectivity using the wave uh, reception technology, it's plus minus 15 a month. But with that added connectivity, uh, to the um, these antennas uh, across the world. It's hardly off by a second a day. It, and also, I love that afterglow, if I just engage it there, the way it fades out. You know, this goes back to my first point about the quality. And they've really refined the the features, these larger buttons. I mean, look, look at you see all the dirt there. This is from, from jogging and running with this watch. Such a monumental shift from these tiny little things it's just so much easier to operate. So functionally, it does everything it's supposed to do. Uh, I haven't used the Bluetooth connectivity. I just, as a standalone timekeeping device, great for reference 
uh, to your whole collection and keeping track of the accuracy of your other watches in the collection. The world time function, I mean, this is a grab and go. It sets itself, you don't have to worry about it. Outside the box, it was just dead on, absolutely dead on. So I really appreciate that. You know, all the flash alerts, all these little things. Um, and the fact that it's tough solar, you know, it's just, anyway, I'm going, I'm rabbiting on. So let's move on to the third point. I think that the, the historic importance of this watch is definitely my third point. It was long overdue for an update. This marked the 35th anniversary of this uh, very important watch. I'm glad they did it with the, the G-Shock Square. It makes sense because, it, you know, the original in 1983 was, of course, a square. It's also the, the, the one of the watches that's been to space, that's been in movies. So one cannot deny the significance of this watch is massive. Well, it's truly iconic. So, yeah. The fourth point is the price. Now... A lot of people were shocked at when I said, yeah, it's a $400 G-Shock. And they were like, no, I would never spend that money on a G-Shock. Now, in comparison, here we have my $40 G-Shock, which this is still my favorite. It's still my favorite, even over this. Is it worth 10 times the price? In terms of functionality, what it delivers, yeah, it, it offers 10 times as much, definitely. And then you have added aspects like the quality. The price has remained constant. It's somehow retained its value. If you look on eBay and you look how these sell for, it, even a battered up version like this, they hold their value. I can't believe it. And, you know, detractors can say all they want, but these Japanese made ones are um, a little bit more... Um, desired, I, I, I guess you could say. I think the price is spot on. And when people complain about the price, you know, I complained about the lack of sapphire, uh, which we'll, we'll talk about in just a moment. But actually, when you understand what goes into a watch, all the different components, the polishing, R&D, the, from the upkeep of the factory, the paying people's wages, the electricity, all the different costs, I think actually at the end of the day, I do think you get your money's worth. So I can't believe it. I'm actually defending the price. Something that must be said when discussing the value is the way that uh, Casio are selling their watches. I really respect the fact that Casio are embracing the future. More brands need to do this. Uh, and you get the same experience with their online boutique ordering direct from them. Uh, this cuts out grey market dealers and you pay the flat rate of $400. You know, and th there's no hidden costs. You also get the speed and efficiency. You just don't have to think about it. Uh, it's easy to return. If there's any issues, you get the full warranty as well, which is something you don't get with uh, the, the grey market. And number five, it's built like an absolute tank. It's still held up really, really well. The, the metal has added an extra layer of, of, of protection, obviously. I did complain, oh, I wanted the, um, the crystal to be sapphire, but now I've realized that was part of my ignorance. The mineral is deliberate because it uh, reacts better to shock and is more pressure resistant. Uh, yes, it's less scratch resistant than sapphire, but uh, it's not prone to shattering. So in keeping with the, the original three tens of uh, Kiko Aibes, it does live up to it. You've got 200 meters water resistance. As a dive watch, you could, you could literally take it diving and that afterglow in the deep depths would be so useful. In fact, actually the, the, the buttons would be great with, with diving gloves and all the rest of it. I wonder if it's, it would be certified for, for space flight like its uh, predecessor there. Um, by NASA. So yeah, it's tough, it's robust, you just don't have to think about it. So what about the hates? What about the negatives? What about, how, how has that changed over the two months? Well, the first thing I have to complain about is the weight. It's twice as heavy as your standard G-Shock. So we're looking at 100 grams off the, uh, the strap. I'm not talking about the bracelet option. That's about the same as a normal watch, but if I show you here, so this is me jogging with it on, right? Uh, this is um, almost two months ago. Now you'll notice I had it over the sleeve, which I'm, interestingly, I'm wearing the same sleeve now. This is a, uh, for, for jogging really, and it has a hole here to put your hand, right? Now the reason was people were asking, why are you wearing it over your sleeve? I wasn't trying to be trendy or anything. It's simply because the weight of this is so top heavy that when you're jogging, it's moving around, moving around. 
it actually bruised and cut into my the case here cut into my wrist i actually have a a little scar now from the <laughs> from chocking with this on never got that with this uh however one advantage was definitely the the lack of um you don't have these little screws because it's a screw down case back so in a sense for everyday wear it was more comfortable certainly but jogging with this on it became a real issue i had to go back to this and if you're jogging long distance like i was after a while you you do feel it okay so yeah i was a little bit disappointed okay my second big issue is the polishing these large flat high polished areas i would love the top to be brushed like the top of the bezel i love the uh, the beveling i think that should remain high polish and and maybe I like the buttons and the, the screw uh, heads, of course, being high polished. But this area here, I felt it was a little bit flashy. I got a lot of attention with it, but it veers off into the more dressy direction, which is not what I want the G-Shock to be like. For me, the G-Shock is a tool. We'll, we'll go into its identity crisis in just a moment. But uh, there's a very similitude that I, I deeply admire about the basic uh, G-Shock. It's unpretentious, it's tactical aesthetic. It's there to serve a purpose. Whereas this new metal, I, I, I think uh, it loses some of that. It's a little bit too loud. I can't imagine what the gold plated one uh, would be because I have seen it in the flesh and I, I'm not into the, the tone of it. It's a little bit too brash for me. Um, so yeah, I I would have preferred a more tooltastic, maybe a sandblasted kind of look, I think would have really, really taking it to, to that next level okay let's move on to the next one and that's the size now some people incredibly complained it was too small i think actually it's too big but you know what and and i've said this with my recent reaction to the skx or the new seiko 5 replacements why not make multiple versions they have the g-shot mini why not do a mini version of this i would snap it up it's it's yeah it's to the extremities of my wrist and it's not that tall and I understand it has to be you know with the 10 the three tens the 10 bar water resistance 10 meter drop uh, shot, uh, shot proof 10 this 10 that all the rest of it right but they've proved with the G-Shock mini that you can still meet those requirements and qualifications in a smaller case if you remember my my, my recent review of the of this highly underrated G-Shock mini uh, which you can only buy from Japan. So why not make a smaller version? And you know what? That goes into my fourth big hate and loathe of this watch. The identity crisis. What is this watch? It feels more dressy, but yet it's nowhere near the disposable, rugged watch that adorns like every elite military <laughs> and, and, and soldier and, and firefighter and, you know, all those extreme kind of harsh environments that you require a G-Shock. Uh, it's not that. This is this is not something you'd, you'd you'd take into the battlefield. Certainly not with these highly reflective surfaces and giving your position away. You know, this is this feels like something else. I almost wish G-Shock would have gone in the Royal Oak direction, and it does feel a little Royal Oakish, and 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 committed to making a proper G-Shock dress watch imagine that if they would have done something based on this design with the functionality and everything but then more refined thinner uh, more elegant more for every day this is actually quite elegant i have to say and that that's what confuses me yes it's 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 a refined super version of this i guess but that's 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 the, <laughs> the gift and the curse of this watch what's its role what's it supposed to do i guess it's Ultimately, it's supposed to commemorate 35 years, right? And it does that. It certainly does that. But why not do something new for that 35 years? Like the way Adam Piguet and uh, Patek, they brought in Genta to, to essentially reinvent the wheel and revolutionize, you know, with the, these luxury steel sports watches. Because this, in comparison to this, almost feels like a luxury watch. I know people are going to laugh, but why not go all the way? Why not make a dressy, luxury, fully committed 
G-Shock. And it, it's just an idea of mine. Um, I, you know, imagine it slender. Then again, you know, you're gonna. It's gonna be difficult to fit all that uh, shockproof technology, the ten layers, etc., etc. But anyway, okay. The the fifth and last final thing is the strap. The strap. When I got it out of the box and I put it on for the first time, this strap is so long, and this goes back to my point about the size. When it wrapped around the uh, the wrist, I had I almost wanted to cut it off, but I'm not going to cut it off. They've done this new way of attaching it, you see there, which means you have to go to a third party like uh, JNK's to get special adapters, the way it's attached. So they're trying to kind of be clever about it so you only order from the G-Shock website. Now, thankfully, JNK's exists, and but had JNK not existed, I would have had to go back to G-Shock, order a bracelet or, or, or some, something else because this simply didn't fit my small wrist. I had to go with an, a, an adapter. Um, that's a big problem when you can't even wear it comfortably, you know, I mean look yeah It attaches to the wrists. It's amazing a uh, beautiful supple high-quality rubber really is but um, It was kind of unwearable so that's defeated the whole point of the watch now if I go back to my phone there and we see the picture there I'm jogging uh, Broad Street there in Philadelphia and yes, I've got this back on my wrist uh, it's got a bit of dirt and stuff, but with the, with the um, nylon strap, you know, you get it all sweaty, you wash it, I take it in the shower. Um, a little bit of PVD has come off the buckle, but uh, it's fine, it adds more character. Having said that, this, is, this has stood up very, very well. I do love the, the, the more convenient, you split from split time, you, you know, it, it, it tells you what's going on in the dot matrix. So it's, it's far superior undoubtedly far superior. I love this watch, it's pure class, but I've gone back to the old ways, the tried and tested, the $40, because to me, this is the quintessential G-Shock. It's my favorite G-Shock. So what's gonna happen? Am I gonna sell it, am I gonna keep it? I'm probably gonna keep it for a while. Um, I don't know, Give it a, certainly give it a clean. But anyway, let me know your thoughts, your experiences. What have you found uh, to be your main loves and loathes of the G-Shock Metal? Please do share that below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. Now, before I go, guys, I just want to quickly tell you about this extremely cool app that Watchbox have launched. This is my own personal go-to app for everything watch-related. Using the app, you can keep track of the real-time value of your watch collection. You can store watches in your digital watch box and even try on watches using an augmented reality. So don't miss out and please go to the App Store and download it today. You can access all of my latest videos right there in the app itself. And if you haven't already, please follow me on the official Urban Gentry Instagram and of course the Facebook UGWC. But most importantly of all, keep it positive onwards and upwards.